Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting logarithmic equation. We have log x over y equals log x over log y. And we're going to try to find an equation that relates x and y. In other words, we're going to try to isolate one of the variables. Now, do we have an identity like this? Like the log of a quotient? Is that the quotient of logs? No, that's not an identity. But we do have another identity which could take care of the left-hand side. And that is the log of a quotient can be written as the difference of two logs. So we don't have anything for the right-hand side, but we have something for the left-hand side if you are familiar with properties of logs. And the left-hand side can be written as log x minus log y. And now we're going to set it equal to the right-hand side. So now for simplicity's sake, I'm going to go ahead and use substitution here, which is going to make things a little easier, just a bit. So let's go ahead and call this A and call this B. So that gives us A minus B equals A over B. Instead of writing the log, log, log every time, I'm just going to use A and B and then back substitute. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. Even though it has two variables, we can still solve for one of the variables in terms of the other. So let's go ahead and cross multiply, which is something that most people would do. AB minus B squared equals A. In other words, multiply both sides by B. Make sense? Like this. Multiply by B and multiply by B so that B cancels out. So now we're going to go ahead and put it in a nicer form. Since we have a B squared, we can make it a quadratic. Let's put uh, the everything on the right hand side. So we get B squared minus AB plus A equals zero. So if you treat this as a quadratic in B, because B is squared, then we can write the solutions using the quadratic formula. Negative B, it's kind of confusing because B is in this case negative A. So B can be written as A plus minus the square root of the discriminant, B squared minus 4AC, but B squared is A squared minus 4AC. So that's just going to be 4a. And that is divided by 2. Because the coefficient of b squared is 1, so it's monic. So we got two solutions. It shouldn't be a surprise because this is quadratic. But this means we can split it up into two solutions. Like this. And like that. Let's go ahead and split it up. And now we can go ahead and back substitute what a and b are. And then we can go from there. But this complicates things quite a bit. So there's a better idea. And nobody said you have to solve for y specifically or you have to solve for x. So we can do any one. Let's go ahead and rewrite our equation and make another attempt. So I can go ahead and pick it up from where we left off like this. a, b minus b squared equals a. Now, instead of solving for b, because b gives us a quadratic and there are two roots, how would you distinguish between these, right? Something to, to think about, especially when I show you the graph at the end, I want you to think about uh, which solution would be acceptable or would both of them be acceptable and why and what. Anyways, so let's go ahead and do a simpler route. And that is trying to solve for a instead of b. Let's go ahead and bring the a over here and put the b squared on the right hand side. And now our next step is going to be, since we're trying to solve for a, it only makes sense to factor a out. And then dividing by b minus 1, we're going to get a in terms of b in a much simpler way. At least it's not quadratic and we have a single solution, which is kind of nice, right? Cool, cool. But there are some limitations. b shouldn't be 1. What happens if b equals 1? We'll talk about all that. So let's go back to the substitution point. We said that, hey, set log x equal to a and log y equal to b. So b cannot equal 1 means b does not equal 1 implies log y does not equal 1. And that implies y does not equal 10. When I show you the graph, you're going to notice something, hopefully. And by the way, the graph of this relation is, I think, beautiful. I just find it beautiful. I don't know if there's a name for it, but it's a really, really nice graph. Let me not tell you what it looks like. 
I don't want to give it away. But anyways, you'll see it at the end. So we have these two things. So let's go ahead and back substitute. Replace A with log X and B with log Y. So you have to square log Y in the numerator. And at the bottom, you have to subtract 1. By using properties of logs, obviously log Y minus 1 can be written as log y minus log 10, and that can be turned into log y over 10. I don't know which one is simpler. Uh, probably the second one looks a little more compact, but I don't think that's a big deal. Anyways, we got log x, but we want to isolate the actual variable x. So in order to be able to do that, we can use the identity 10 to the power log x equals x, right? Because when the bases are equal, and we get the argument, which is x in this case. And that property in general looks like this, b to the power log a with base b equals a. So these bases kind of cancel out. That's actually the definition of the logarithm, if you think about it. So using this identity, we can uh, do 10 to the power both sides here. So it's going to look like x equals 10 to the power log x, which is 10 to the power log y squared divided by log y minus 1. Awesome. Forget about the 10 to the log x, and you can write x directly as 10 to the power log y squared divided by log y minus 1. Awesome. But not so awesome because we can simplify this a little bit. Why? By using the same property that we used here, 10 to the power log something equals something, we have that with y here. But log y is squared, so how do you simplify that? So you can use properties of exponents again, and properties of exponents and logs are so useful, so helpful, so nice that you should all know them if you are not already familiar with them, okay? So let's go ahead and do the following. So if you have a to the power mn, you can write it as a to the power m, and then that is raised to the power n. Make sense? The exponents are multiplied. So we can go ahead and split it up like this, 10 to the power log y, which is something we want, and then that to the power log y over log y minus 1. Why? Because when you multiply these two exponents, you get this exponent. Make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay, now we have inside the parentheses 10 to the power log y, which is just y, and you're like, why? Hopefully you know why. Then it is y to the power log y over log y minus 1. Again, you can write the bottom as log y over 10. I don't think it's a big deal. You could even write it as something like log y with base y over 10. I don't think it's any simpler. It just looks different. Maybe single log, some people consider that simpler, but this is fine. Come on. You can leave it like this. So what? This is our relation. Obviously, log y cannot equal 1, so y cannot equal 10. And can x be anything? Well, here's the thing. If you are thinking about the limitations for a, then you should definitely look at this. And obviously, a is going to give you something for x, right? Because a is equal to log x. So whatever limits a is going to limit x. So according to this, uh, these two quadratic solutions, uh, we have to have a squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0, and this implies a is outside the 0 to 4 interval. So it's either here or here. a is either negative or greater than 4. If a is negative, which is log x is negative, then x must be between 0 and 1. Otherwise, if a is greater than 4, that means log x is greater than 4, and that means x is greater than 10 to the fourth power, so on and so forth. Anyways, those are some of the limitations. Hopefully you can get rid of, you can figure them out. Let me go ahead and show you the graph, which I think is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What, what do you think? Don't you think it's beautiful? I think it's great. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. And by the way, it's going to be in two hours, and that's going to be a infinite expression. Anyways, until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.